So to start out with, we're going to install the camera body into the housing. Now, before we get into the housing, make sure you have a charged battery, make sure you have a card in the camera, and make sure you've taken a shot and that you can actually take that image and put it under your computer. I can speak from personal experience that you don't want to be updating Lightroom on location and find out that you need to do an update. So once you've done that, it's as simple as getting the body into the housing. So here we have a housing that features a dual train handle. Um, so the housing comes with the single and this has it added um, and it has an extension so it's more comfortable to get your finger over to that handle. We have a separate video we'll link to to show you a closer look on how to do that. But in order to open the housing, you have three locking latches. So they have locks that lift up here and then release. The reason that it has locks is in case it gets caught or anything, it won't open on its own. You have to actually do a deliberate motion to unlock the back. So once you've undone all three, they lift over the hooks and you set your back to the side. And then once you're inside, you'll notice controls and these controls interface with the controls of the camera and you have a camera mount that slides into a base on the inside. So take your controls and push them up out of the way. Make sure that they're going to align and everything is going to align when you install your camera. Remove the mount and at this point you can slide your housing away to the side and your mount is marked so that you know what camera it works with. It has your standard quarter 20 mount here. It has an anti-rotation wall on the back that butts up against the back of the camera and that just mounts to your camera just like a tripod would. So what you want to do is get a flat headed screwdriver and then thread that onto your camera. Now at this point in time, you want to give this a good snug because if there's any motion on movement or pivoting on this particular part, it's going to translate to how the controls interface with the camera. So you want to get that nice and snug. It's a nice snug platform. Now I personally leave this on the camera because it's designed to have a quarter 20 thread in the bottom and that can be added to a tripod. So you can actually keep this on your camera. It still allows access to your battery door indefinitely unless you want to take the camera LCD screen and swing it out. So once you have the camera mounted to the mount, what you're going to do is you're going to take your housing, you're going to take your hot shoe that comes with it, move it out of the way. I'll go ahead and slide it on. Make sure it slides all the way forward. You'll align your mount with the base and you'll slide it into position. Line up your back control. And at this point you want to take to make sure that you don't have any specifically animal hair or any debris. This is a ceiling surface right here. So just check it to make sure that it's clean. Go to your back and this is a compression seal. So it doesn't require any lubricant. So just check to make sure that you don't have anything on it. And a unique and useful feature of our housings is when you go to put the back on, because it's made out of a clear material, when you go to lock it down, you actually get to see your main O-ring compress all the way around the perimeter. That is a very useful uh, feature of this housing and all of our housings. Not only can I see now that that compressed O-ring, I can look and see my camera and its safety at all times. So moving forward, we'll check our controls that they interface with the camera. I really like the R5 because there's just a lot of direct drive controls. Everything is just right there. You have your control over the, all your dials and your push buttons and everything from that point. And now you're ready to put your lens and port system together. So let's start with the 8-15 to fisheye lens. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to want to remove the shade. So you got to take the cap off, push the button, and then the shade will come off. And I already have the adapter installed, so this like goes from EF to RF, which is what we're using here. Set that aside. And then we turn our attention to the housing. And the housing ships with a dust cap on the inside that's held in with the retainer, the zoom gear retainer. So just unthread the retainer and the dust cap will just fall out, set that aside. And from this point what we can do is take our gear sleeve and we're going to install it and just drops in. Now it has teeth around this outside diameter and those teeth interface with the gear train which is driven over here. So your left hand can turn this 
and it's going to turn the gear sleeve. So what we do is, if we don't put the retainer in, this will just fall out. So what we do is you take your retainer, you drop it back into place, and then you use this tool that comes with the housing, and you just wanna thread that back down there. It doesn't need to be super tight, but that's gonna keep the gear sleeve from falling forward. Okay. Now, that's in place. We can drive our gear sleeve. If we come over to our lens, you'll notice that the kit that's recommended for this lens will come with foam pads. You're going to want to use the thinnest foam pads and you're going to adhere them to the inside diameter of this clamp. And that's the perfect pad for the 8 to 15. So once you have those on there, what I always do is I'll take this from 8 to 15 and I'll find the mid range around 12. I'll take my clamp and I want to put that over the lens so that these tabs face away from the camera body. And I want to make sure that one of them actually lines up with the red dot of the lens, and you'll see why here in a second. So we'll put that over the top, and it's spring-loaded, which is designed to squeeze the lens. You put that on there, get it lined up around the gear, around the sleeve of the lens. And now I have that tab in line with the red dot. So I'm going to turn my tension back over to the housing. We're going to go in. This is your lens release control over here on the side. So I push it. I'm going to take my dust cap off, set it aside. And I'm going to take my drive gear and I'm going to move one of these two ribs because they correspond to the two tabs now. So I'm going to take one of the two ribs and I'm going to line it up with the red line on the camera mount. And now because I've lined up the rib and that red dot, and I've aligned the tab and this red dot, I can now take the lens and I can feed it in, making sure that the ribs go into the tabs. And I know that it's roughly lined up. And then I just feel for it and click it on. Next thing, use your drive gear. And now I can see that I'm zooming my lens. Now that's in place and exactly where I want it. And from that point, we can go to our port system and we can waterproof this setup. Now you have, in this scenario, you have a compact dome port and you have an extension. Now there's a different set port and extension if you want to use the big dome port, but the process is the same. So with a lot of the products, you're going to get iClight lubricant. Definitely use the iClight lubricant. If you use a non iClight lubricant, it can swell the O-ring, which will cause a leak. So definitely stick with this and it doesn't take much. One of these will last you a really long time. So what you do is just tear the top off and you check that you get a little bit on your fingers and then you want to run that around the o-ring and if you think that you need to clean the o-ring you just pinch it and take it off run it through your fingers gently don't stretch it Make sure it's shiny, make sure you don't have anything on there. You can take a lens cloth in this groove because that's a sealing surface as well and clean it out if need be. I find that I don't do this often. Um, anytime I take a port apart, put it back together, I'll just leave it on there and I will just run lube across the sealing surface. And then I'll turn my attention over to the port system and we have a similar design with the same O-ring. So these are retained with these thumb screws, each component. They're like Legos, so you put them together, they stack. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that the three thumb screws are unthreaded to the point that they're clear of the sealing surface, because you don't want those to snag on the way in and catch the O-ring. So what you do is you find your sealing surface, which is this vertical wall here on all the extensions, and it's this vertical wall here on all the ports. So you get your port components and you make sure that all three thumb screws on each component are free and out of the way. I take a little bit of the lubricant and I check that sealing surface to make sure there's nothing on it. Again, pet hair is your number one problem, but any debris, you wanna make sure that's cleaned off. Same here. And just like we did on the housing, I'll take a little bit of the lubricant and I'll put it on my finger just like that. It doesn't take much. And I'll run it across the sealing surface. I recommend doing this anytime you take these parts apart and put them back together. Now, the reason I say is not to do a lot is because the silicone doesn't create the seal, it overcomes the friction so that when you put the two pieces together, they slide and they glide. 
You don't want any rolling or catching of an O-ring. That's why you do that. So what I'll do is I'll get that part and I'll take this part and we check the sealing surface of it and you'll notice that the thumb screws line up with the thumb screws. And those thumb screws have corresponding pockets. So you have a pocket here, here, and here, just like you have a pocket here, here, and here. So if we take that thumb screw and we place it over the extension and we firmly press down, we now have a sealed set of components there. Now what we do is we thread the thumb screws down and that retains them. It basically keeps the part from being pulled off. The seal occurred when we put the two pieces together, not when we're tightening these down. So these can go all the way to the bottom and you'll notice that when you tighten them down, because they lined up with the pocket, the screw is going into the pocket. You don't want to get that screw in a spot where you don't have a pocket. You'll notice that because it won't go all the way down. Don't force it. Now we take our port assembly. Again, three thumb screws. And you'll notice on ports that one of the three thumb screws is going to correspond to a shade. So you'll take that and that'll be your noon position, or your top position of your housing. You've checked your ceiling surface, you've checked your ceiling surface, line up again the set screws or thumb screws with the pockets, firmly press in, you'll feel it click, and then I apply a little downward pressure when I tighten the thumb screws. And again, the seal occurred when the components went together and the thumb screws basically keep them from coming off. Now, in this case, we have a complete waterproof housing with the Canon 8 to 15 fisheye lens. So the next lens is gonna be the 14 to 35 RF. Um, so this one's a little bit different because it has a dedicated friction sleeve to interface with the zoom gear. Um, so once we've removed our dust cap and, and we've used our zoom gear retainer, you don't wanna get rid of it, but do set it aside for the time. So you're gonna take this and this is going to, again, it's gonna to touch the lens. So what you wanna do is we'll go in, drop our gear sleeve in, and again, just like before, the gear drive will drive the sleeve, take your retainer and drop it in place, and then thread it down. Again, it doesn't need to be very tight. This is what's just keeping that from falling out. Make sure that you've got a good drive. Lens release control, so remove your body cap. Take your lens. Now, I'm not saying that I've ever done this, but if you don't take this off, you don't get very good photos. So take this, remove the back, find your red line, find your red line in there. Now you don't have orientation on this because it has equidistant spaced friction pads. Take this, drop it into place, roughly aligning your red lines there. And then at this point you feel for the, you feel for your bayonet and you click it into place. And it's gonna, you're gonna notice it. And then when you test your zoom before you put your port on, you have a nice smooth zoom from 14 to 35. So at this point, you're ready to cap it with your port system. Now in this case, you can use the 50 millimeter plus the small dome port that we have here or the 50 millimeter with the eight inch dome port if you're shooting over unders, that's your best bet. But the same assembly process for both. So take the included Eichelite lube. Again, we don't want to use another lube that could make the O-ring swell. We know this one's compatible, so stick with this. Get a little bit on your finger, and you're checking for debris, and you want to apply a slight film of lubricant onto the O-ring. Don't overdo this because the silicone does not equal a better seal. It just lets the O-rings glide on the sealing surface. Uh, it, it's not uh, something that you're going to say, oh, the more lube I use, the better off it's gonna be. Actually, the opposite, it has a tendency to pick up anything that you may set it down on. So don't set anything down after you've lubricated it. Turn your attention to your extension. It's the exact same fitting, the exact same O-ring. Check to make sure that it has a slight amount of lube on it and that it doesn't have hair or debris. Come over to your port, check your sealing surface. And on both of these components, you wanna make sure that your thumb screws are backed out and not protruding into the diameter of the ceiling surface because you don't want the thumb screw to catch an O-ring on your way in. So make sure that you're backed out here and make sure that you're backed out here. Now you'll notice that these components here, the male fitting, has three corresponding pockets. Three corresponding pockets, those correspond to the thumb screws of the mating part. 
So if we go to our port, we have one thumb screw that aligns with the shade. That's gonna be the top. So find your thumb screws, align them with the pockets. You have a little bit of play because the pocket's wider than the thumb screw. Line it up, firmly press it down, and then you wanna tighten the three thumb screws. The seal occurred again when we put the two components together, not when I'm tightening these thumb screws down. These are more of a retain retention system. So we wanna screw these down flush. It comes with a little tool, so if your fingers don't get to it, you can use the tool to get them flush. But again, this is not creating the seal, it's just to keep it from popping off. Now that we have our extension and our port put together, double check to make sure you don't have anything protruding in. Check to see which shade is at the top, in this case here. These thumb screws again correspond to the thumb screws here. This is the top the noon position, that's your shade. Align those up and then firmly press them together. You'll feel a click. Make sure they're pressed flush and then tighten down each of the three thumb screws. And now you have a complete waterproof system with the Canon EOS R5 and the 14 to 35 RF. Last but not least, we have the Canon 100 millimeter macro. We've removed our dust cap, don't need it. Um, and we have our gear sleeve. Now you don't need this because we're not gonna use a gear with this lens, but just to keep it in one spot where you know it is, I do recommend putting it back into your housing and not with your gear, because then you know what it is where you left it. Uh, lens release control, turn, pushes the button. That way you can remove your body cap. Set that aside. Take your lens, remove the back, remove the front, just like you would. Line up your dots and bayonet that onto the body. And we have three components here, two extensions that get put together, and a flat port. Um, lens cap, set to the side. Use the included Eyclite lubricant so that it doesn't swell your O-ring and cause a problem. Take a little bit of lube on your finger. Again, not much, we wanna use just enough here so that we overcome friction. This doesn't create a seal, it keeps the O-rings gliding against surfaces. And we'll do that to the base. We'll do that to this extension, and we'll do that to this extension. If you feel like you need to take one of these off and clean it, simply slide, pinch, and push it off. And now you can take the O-ring, clean it, slide it through, take a lens cloth, clean the groove if you have to, and then basically put it back on. So now what we wanna do for these components is back out the thumb screws on all three thumb screws for each component. We don't want a thumb screw snagging an O-ring, once it clears the surface here, which we'll clean, put a little lube on, it's not gonna hurt it. Make sure that you can, you can feel things on a ceiling surface more so than you can see them. So again, back out each thumb screw. Feel your surface, make sure there's nothing on it, no pet hair. Same thing here, ceiling surface, thumb screws are clear. Now that each component, these are the two extensions that get put together. It doesn't matter whether or not you put this one down first or this one, or this one, then this one, because it's going to equal the same amount. So what we'll do is we'll take the thumb screws that align with the pockets, line the pockets with the thumb screws, press your components together, and then you want to tighten down the thumb screws of the part you just pushed on. Again, take our part here, line the thumb screws with the pockets, press on, When you tighten these thumb screws down, it doesn't create the seal. It just keeps them from pulling apart. The seal occurred when we put them to the two together. Now we have our assembly of extensions and flat port, and this simply just drops down over your lens, and it's designed to put that lens as close to your camera and lens as possible. Press that on, and then what you do is you line up and tighten these thumb screws down. And now you have a complete and waterproof system with the Canon EOS R5 and the 100 millimeter. All right, so as is, we have a completely waterproof system. In this case, it's the Canon 100 millimeter RF lens uh, and the EOS R5. Uh, so this is waterproof as it is. You can go in the water, you can scuba dive with it. Um, one measure that we take beyond here is we create a vacuum inside this housing. And in order to do that, we use this vacuum pump here. 
um, and then you'll notice on the side of the housing that you have a vacuum port. Now the reason that you'd want to do this is twofold. One is it makes sure that you didn't forget an o-ring, one's not damaged, because um, if it can hold a vacuum it's going to keep water out. The other thing that the vacuum does is it reinforces all the, the mechanical closing systems. So when you create a vacuum in here, this back is going to be sucked onto the front and the ports are going to be sucked onto the front of the housing. As it say sucked, it's going to have a pressure differential. So you're going to actually having the parts pushing in on each other. And that's exactly what you want. When you create a vacuum, you actually want to dive with it under a vacuum because that's when you're in the rough water or a wave comes by you want those parts to be pushed together. When you're done with your dive, then you release the vacuum, then you open the housing and you take your camera out. So if we create a vacuum, we use this. The port is plugged. So you push the button on the side and then the cap will pop out. It's double O-ring sealed. This is not waterproof at depth. So that's why you have to make sure that this goes back in, hence why it's tethered here. When you're done with this whole system, push it back in and that's sealed. So pop that out, take your fitting, insert it, and then from here it's all in the hand pump and you'll have a gauge. This is inches of mercury. So what I recommend doing is choosing a number. So the number that you choose is not critical, the fact that it doesn't change is what's critical. If this needle is moving, that's where you're going to run into a problem because I'm meaning that it's losing pressure, therefore you have a leak somewhere. If the needle doesn't move, that means that you have a stable system. So what I'll do is I choose 10, so I will hand pump this to 10. So it takes a minute, but once you get there, what you want to do is, the sooner that you do this, the better. Um, what I'll often do is take this and I will create the vacuum the night before because it gives the system the entire night to go over and lose the opportunity to lose a vacuum if it's a small leak, and that way I know. In this case, I will go to 10, and I'll stay there. And initially I'll watch it to make sure that that needle doesn't move. If this needle is dropping slowly, that means I have a problem in the system somewhere. So what I'll do is I will leave this at 10, and there can be a leak in this hand pump somewhere, which is not going to translate to a leak here. So if that's the case, especially overnight, what I do is I take this vacuum plug out. We've dropped pressure and I've replugged. I'll let this sit overnight and then I'll come back, take my plug out. And when I reinsert the vacuum, you'll notice that the needle jumps right back to where it was. If you lose half a notch or a notch, it just occurred from the vacuum opening and closing. But if that jumps right back to where you were, you know that this held vacuum overnight and you're good to go. When you pull this valve out, there is a spring-loaded seal in there, so it actually seals as you pull this in and out. So this vacuum stays held even though you're taking this in and out. Take that aside. Do make sure that this goes back in and now you have a system that is vacuum sealed and you do want to dive with this like this. A question that we get all the time is, do I want to take this under the water with a vacuum? What if something occurs? Isn't that going to pull water into the housing faster? Well, the, the truth is that you're under an immense amount of pressure uh, anyway, so the vacuum that you added isn't going to make that significantly worse by any means. So. The advantages are that I know that I have all my seals good and I know that everything is reinforced. And I can see nicely on the back that the entire back is completely sealed. And if, just for demonstration purposes, we were to attempt to remove the back, for example, we can't. This is an illustration to show you the reinforcement that the vacuum is preventing this back from coming off. Now you're ready to get in the water. Okay, in order to release the vacuum, what we need to do is remove the plug. And then on the inside of this valve, you'll notice there's a button. And there's two ways. You can reinsert your, your insert here for your vacuum and then hit this release, and that'll release it. If you don't have this, let's say you're on the boat, you can take a pencil and actually push that button and release it. You'll actually hear it go. So in this case, we'll use the 
plug, and you'll notice that when I put that in there, I jump back up to 10, now I can release the vacuum. Can remove the plug. I make it a habit that if I ever take anything out of here, I always put something back in so that I don't forget that before a dive. And now I can open up my housing. And that is as simple as it is to vacuum and release a vacuum.